Muhammad Siad Bar Somali, Maxim Siyad Bar, Arabic, Mehmd Siyad Bri October 6, 1919 to January 2, 1995 was a Somali politician who served as the President of the Somali Democratic Republic from 1969 to 1991. Bar, a major general of the Gendarmerie, became President of Somalia after the 1969 coup d'état that overthrew the Somali Republic following the assassination of President Abdurashid Ali Shermark. The Supreme Revolutionary Council military junta government under Bar established Somalia as a one-party, Marxist-Leninist socialist state, renaming the country the Somali Democratic Republic and adopting scientific socialism, with support from the Soviet Union. Bar's early rule was characterized by widespread modernization, nationalization of banks and industry, promotion of cooperative farms, a new writing system for the Somali language, and anti-tribalism. The Somali Revolutionary Socialist Party became Somalia's ruling party in 1976, and Bar started the Agaden War against Ethiopia on a platform of Somali nationalism and pan-Somalism. Bar's popularity declined from the late 1970s following Somalia's defeat in the Agaden War, triggering the Somali Rebellion and severing ties with the Soviet Union. Opposition grew in the 1980s due to his increasingly dictatorial rule, growth of tribal politics, abuses of the National Security Service including the Isak genocide, and the sharp decline of Somalia's economy. In 1991, Bar's government collapsed as the Somali rebellion successfully ejected him from power, leading to the Somali civil war, and forcing him into exile where he died in Nigeria in 1995. Early years. Mohamed Siad Bar was born on October 6, 1919, near Shalavo, a town in the predominantly Somali populated Agaden region of the Ethiopian Empire, into the Somali Marian Darad clan and the sub clan of Rer Dini. Bar's parents died when he was 10 years old, and after receiving his primary education in the town of Luuk in southern Italian Somalia, moved to the capital Mogadishu to pursue his secondary education. In 1935, Bar enrolled in the Italian colonial police as a Zaptier despite being ineligible as he was born in Ethiopia, instead claiming to have been born in Garbahari in order to qualify. Bar seems to have probably participated as a Zaptier in the southern theater of the Italian conquest of Ethiopia in 1936, and later joined the colonial police force during the British Somaliland military administration, rising to major general, the highest possible rank. In 1946, Bar supported the Somali Conference Italian, Conferenza Somala, a political group of parties and clan associations that were hostile to the Somali Youth League and were supported by the local Italian farmers. The group presented a petition to the Four Powers Investigation Commission in order to allow that the administration of the United Nations Trust Territory could be entrusted for 30 years to Italy. In 1950, shortly after Italian Somaliland became a United Nations Trust territory under Italian administration for ten years, Bar, who was fluent in Italian, attended the Carabinieri Police School in Florence for two years. Upon his return to Somalia, Bar remained with the military and eventually became vice commander of the Somali army when the country gained its independence in 1960 as the Somali Republic. In the early 1960s, after spending time with Soviet officers in joint training exercises, Bar became an advocate of Soviet-style Marxist-Leninist government, believing in a socialist government and a stronger sense of Somali nationalism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Seizure of power. In 1969, following the assassination of Somalia's second president, Abdurashid Ali Shermark, the military staged the 1969 coup d'état on October 21, the day after Shermark's funeral, overthrowing the Somali Republic's government. The Supreme Revolutionary Council (SRC), a military junta led by Major General Bar, Lieutenant Colonel Salad Gaber Kedia, and Chief of Police Jama Korshal, assumed power and filled the top offices of the government, with Kedia officially holding the title of Father of the Revolution although Bar shortly afterwards became the head of the SRC. The SRC subsequently renamed the country the Somali Democratic Republic, arrested members of the former government, banned political parties, dissolved the parliament and the Supreme Court, and suspended the constitution. <laughs> Presidency Bar assumed the position of President of Somalia, styled the 
victorious leader. Goulwade, and fostered the growth of a personality cult with portraits of him in the company of Marx and Lenin lining the streets on public occasions. Barr advocated a form of scientific socialism based on the Quran and Marxism, with heavy influences of Somali nationalism. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme Revolutionary Council The Supreme Revolutionary Council established large-scale public works programs and successfully implemented an urban and rural literacy campaign, which helped dramatically increase the literacy rate. Barr began a program of nationalizing industry and land, and the new regime's foreign policy placed an emphasis on Somalia's traditional and religious links with the Arab world, eventually joining the Arab League in 1974. That same year, Barr also served as chairman of the Organization of African Unity OAU, the predecessor of the African Union o. .In July 1976, Barr's SRC disbanded itself and established in its place the Somali Revolutionary Socialist Party SRSP, a one-party government based on scientific socialism and Islamic tenets. The SRSP was an attempt to reconcile the official state ideology with the official state religion by adapting Marxist precepts to local circumstances. Emphasis was placed on the Muslim principles of social progress, equality and justice, which the government argued formed the core of scientific socialism and its own accent on self-sufficiency, public participation and popular control, as well as direct ownership of the means of production. While the SRSP encouraged private investment on a limited scale, the administration's overall direction was essentially communist. A new constitution was promulgated in 1979 under which elections for a People's Assembly were held. However, Bar's Somali Revolutionary Socialist Party Politburo continued to rule. In October 1980, the SRSP was disbanded, and the Supreme Revolutionary Council was re established in its place. Topic. Language and anti-Klanism One of the first and principal objectives of the revolutionary regime was the adoption of a standard national writing system. Barr supported the official use of Latin script for the Somali language, replacing Arabic script and Wadad writing that had been used for centuries. Shortly after coming to power, Barr introduced the Somali language AF Somali as the official language of education, and selected the modified Somali Latin alphabet developed by the Somali linguist Shire Jama Ahmed as the nation's standard orthography. From then on, all education in government schools had to be conducted in Somali, and in 1972, all government employees were ordered to learn to read and write Somali within six months. The reason given for this was to decrease a growing rift between those who spoke the colonial languages, Italian or English, and those who did not, as many of the high-ranking positions in the former government were given to people who spoke either Italian or English. Additionally, Barr also sought to eradicate the importance of the Somali clan system within Somalia's government and civil society. The inevitable first question that Somalis asked one another when they met was, What is your clan? But when this was considered to be against to the purpose of a modern state, Somalis began to pointedly ask, What is your ex-clan? Barr outlawed this question and a broad range of other activities classified as clanism, with informers reporting Kabbalists, those considered to propagate the clan system, to the government, leading to arrests and imprisonment. On a more symbolic level, Barr had repeated a number of times, Whom do you know, is changed to, what do you know? And this incantation became part of a popular street song in Somalia. Topic: <laughs> Nationalism and Greater Somalia. Barr advocated the concept of a Greater Somalia, Somalawane, which refers to those regions in the Horn of Africa in which ethnic Somalis reside and have historically represented the predominant population. Greater Somalia encompasses Somalia, Djibouti, the Agaden in Ethiopia, and Kenya's former northeastern province, regions of the Horn of Africa where Somalis form the majority of the population to some proportion. In July 1977, the Agaden War broke out after the Bars government sought to incorporate the various Somali inhabited territories of the region into a Greater Somalia, beginning with the Agaden. The Somali National Army invaded Ethiopia, which was now under communist rule of the Soviet-backed Derg, and was successful at first, capturing most of the territory of the Agaden. The invasion reached an abrupt end with the Soviet Union's shift of support to Ethiopia, followed by almost the entire communist world siding against Somalia. 
The Soviets halted their previous supplies to Bar's regime and increased the distribution of aid, weapons, and training to the Ethiopian government, and also brought in around 15,000 Cuban troops to assist the Ethiopian regime. In 1978, the Somali troops were ultimately pushed out of the Agaden. Topic. Foreign relations Control of Somalia was of great interest to both the Soviet Union and the United States due to the country's strategic location at the mouth of the Red Sea. After the Soviets broke with Somalia in the late 1970s, Barr subsequently expelled all Soviet advisors, tore up his friendship treaty with the Soviet Union, and switched allegiance to the West. The United States stepped in and until 1989, was a strong supporter of the Barr government for whom it provided approximately $100 million per year in economic and military aid. On October 17 and October 18, 1977, a Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine PFLP group hijacked Lufthansa Flight 181 to Mogadishu, holding 86 hostages. West German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt and Barr negotiated a deal to allow a GSG-9 anti-terrorist unit into Mogadishu to free the hostages. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic programs During the first five years, Barr's government set up several cooperative farms and factories of mass production such as mills, sugar cane processing facilities in Johar and Afguye, and a meat processing house in Kismayo. Another public project initiated by the government was the Shalinbud Sandune stoppage. From 1971 onwards, a massive tree planting campaign on a nationwide scale was introduced by Barr's administration to halt the advance of thousands of acres of wind driven sand dunes that threatened to engulf towns, roads, and farm land. By 1988, 265 hectares of a projected 336 hectares had been treated, with 39 range reserve sites and 36 forestry plantation sites established. Between 1974 and 1975, a major drought referred to as the Abarti Dabadir, the lingering drought, occurred in the northern regions of Somalia. The Soviet Union, which at the time maintained strategic relations with the Bar government, airlifted some 90,000 people from the devastated regions of Habio and Kainaba. New settlements of small villages were created in the Jubata Hus Lower Juba and Jubata Dex Middle Juba regions, with these new settlements known as the Danwadagaha or collective settlements. The transplanted families were introduced to farming and fishing, a change from their traditional pastoralist lifestyle of livestock herding. Other such resettlement programs were also introduced as part of Barr's effort to undercut clan solidarity by dispersing nomads and moving them away from clan-controlled land. <laughs> Economic policies As part of Barr's socialist policies, major industries and farms were nationalized, including banks, insurance companies and oil distribution farms. By the mid to late 1970s, public discontent with the Bar regime was increasing, largely due to corruption among government officials as well as poor economic performance. The Agaden War had also weakened the Somali army substantially and military spending had crippled the economy. Foreign debt increased faster than export earnings, and by the end of the decade, Somalia's debt of 4 billion shillings equaled the earnings from 75 years' worth of banana exports. By 1978, manufactured goods exports were almost non existent, and with the lost support of the Soviet Union, the Bar government signed a structural adjustment agreement with the International Monetary Fund during the early 1980s. This included the abolishment of some government monopolies and increased public investment. This and a second agreement were both cancelled by the mid-1980s, as the Somali army refused to accept a proposed 60% cut in military spending. New agreements were made with the Paris Club, the International Development Association and the IMF during the second half of the 1980s. This ultimately failed to improve the economy which deteriorated rapidly in 1989 and 1990, and resulted in nationwide commodity shortages. Car collision In May 1986, President Barr suffered serious injuries in a life-threatening automobile collision near Mogadishu, when the car that was transporting him smashed into the back of a bus during a heavy rainstorm. He was treated in a hospital in Saudi Arabia for head injuries, broken ribs and shock over a period of a month. 
Lieutenant General Muhammad Ali Samatar, then Vice President, subsequently served as de facto head of state for the next several months. Although Barr managed to recover enough to present himself as the sole presidential candidate for re-election over a term of seven years on December 23, 1986, his poor health and advanced age led to speculation about who would succeed him in power. Possible contenders included his son-in-law General Ahmed Suleiman Abdul, who was at the time the Minister of the Interior, in addition to Barr's Vice President Lt. Gen. Samatar. Human rights abuse Part of Barr's time in power was characterized by oppressive dictatorial rule, including persecution, jailing and torture of political opponents and dissidents. The United Nations Development Programme stated that, "...the 21-year regime of Syed Barr had one of the worst human rights records in Africa." In January 1990, the Africa Watch Committee, a branch of Human Rights Watch organizational released an extensive report titled, Somalia A Government at War with Its Own People. Composing of 268 pages, the report highlights the widespread violations of basic human rights in the northern regions of Somalia. The report includes testimonies about the killing and conflict in northern Somalia by newly arrived refugees in various countries around the world. Systematic human rights abuses against the dominant Isak clan in the north was described in the report as state-sponsored terrorism. Both the urban population and nomads living in the countryside were subjected to summary killings, arbitrary arrest, detention in squalid conditions, torture, rape, crippling constraints on freedom of movement and expression and a pattern of psychological intimidation. The report estimates that 50,000 to 60,000 people were killed from 1988 to 1989. Amnesty International went on to report that torture methods committed by Bar's National Security Service (NSS) included executions and beatings while tied in a contorted position, electric shocks, rape of women prisoners, simulated executions and death threats. In September 1970, the government introduced the National Security Law No. 54, which granted the NSS the power to arrest and detain indefinitely those who expressed critical views of the government, without ever being brought to trial. It further gave the NSS the power to arrest without a warrant anyone suspected of a crime involving national security. Article 1 of the law prohibited acts against the independence, unity or security of the state and capital punishment was mandatory for anyone convicted of such acts. From the late 1970s, and onwards Barr faced a shrinking popularity and increased domestic resistance. In response, Barr's elite unit, the Red Berets, Duab CAs, and the paramilitary unit called the Victory Pioneers carried out systematic terror against the Majirtin, Haye, and Isak clans. The Red Berets systematically smashed water reservoirs to deny water to the Majirtin and Isak clans and their herds. More than 2,000 members of the Majirdin clan died of thirst, and an estimated 5,000 Isak were killed by the government. Members of the Victory Pioneers also raped large numbers of Majirtin and Isak women, and more than 300,000 Isak members fled to Ethiopia. By the mid 1980s, more resistance movements supported by Ethiopia's Communist Derg administration had sprung up across the country. Barr responded by ordering punitive measures against those he perceived as locally supporting the guerrillas, especially in the northern regions. The clampdown included bombing of cities, with the Northwestern Administrative Center of Hargisa, a Somali National Movement SNM stronghold, among the targeted areas in 1988. The bombardment was led by General Muhammad Said Hersey Morgan, Barr's son-in-law, and resulted in the deaths of 50,000 people in the north. Topic. Rebellion and ouster After fallout from the unsuccessful Agaden campaign, Barr's administration began arresting government and military officials under suspicion of participation in an abortive 1978 coup d'état. Most of the people who had allegedly helped plot the putsch were summarily executed. However, several officials managed to escape abroad and started to form the first of various dissident groups dedicated to ousting Barr's regime by force. A new constitution was promulgated in 1979 under which elections for a People's Assembly were held. However, Barr's Somali Revolutionary Socialist Party Politburo continued to rule. 
In October 1980, the SRSP was disbanded, and the Supreme Revolutionary Council was re-established in its place. By that time, the moral authority of Bar's ruling Supreme Revolutionary Council had begun to weaken. Many Somalis were becoming disillusioned with life under military dictatorship. The regime was further weakened in the 1980s as the Cold War drew to a close and Somalia's strategic importance was diminished. The government became increasingly totalitarian, and resistance movements, supported by Ethiopia's communist Derg administration, sprang up across the country. This eventually led in 1991 to the outbreak of the civil war, the toppling of Bar's regime and the disbandment of the Somali National Army SNA. Among the militia groups that led the rebellion were the Somali Salvation Democratic Front SSDF, United Somali Congress USC, Somali National Movement SNM, and the Somali Patriotic Movement SPM, together with the non-violent political oppositions of the Somali Democratic Movement SDM, the Somali Democratic Alliance SDA, and the Somali Manifesto Group SMG. Siad Bar escaped from his palace towards the Kenyan border in a tank, Many of the opposition groups subsequently began competing for influence in the power vacuum that followed the ouster of Bar's regime. In the south, armed factions led by USC commanders General Muhammad Farah Idid and Ali Mahdi Muhammad, in particular, clashed as each sought to exert authority over the capital. <laughs> <laughs> Exile and death After fleeing Mogadishu in January 1991, Bar temporarily remained in the southwestern ghetto region of the country, which was the stronghold for his family. From there, he launched a military campaign to return to power. He twice attempted to retake Mogadishu, but in May 1991 was overwhelmed by General Muhammad Farah Idid's army, and was forced into exile. Bar initially moved to Nairobi, Kenya, but opposition groups with a presence there protested his arrival and support of him by the Kenyan government. In response to the pressure and hostilities, he moved two weeks later to Nigeria. Bar died on January 2, 1995 in Lagos from a heart attack. He was buried in Garbahari district in the ghetto region of Somalia. Honours <laughs> <laughs> Order of the National Flag, First Class, of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea 1972 Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Further reading Glickman, Harvey ed. 1992, Political Leaders of Contemporary Africa South of the Sahara, Westport, Connecticut, Greenwood Press, ISBN 0313267812 CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link. Shire, Muhammad Ibrahim, Somali President Muhammad Siad Bar, His Life and Legacy, Surf Publications, 2011. Topic. External links Muhammad Siad Bar Biographical Website in Somali